it'll make very good contact with the nails that you stick right into your fruit. And then from there, it's going to be your job to figure out what's the best way to connect these and to hook them up to the little LED light bulb and see if they actually work. So, any, any questions on the answers to this at the moment? Yes? Uh, will there be, be any testing days for the... Um... Yeah, absolutely. So the testing days, uh, will be testing days here at the work for both the middle school and the high school teams, and I'll, I'll come and be able to do both of those for sure. Um, and I'll bring the multimeter to that. But prior to that, one neat thing, so in your kit there are actually several of these light emitting diodes. Two of them light up at 2 volts, one of them lights up at 3 volts. Right? So you can, a hint in the handout, you can actually string two together, you can string two 2 volts together, it gives you 4 volts. So those are actually built-in little test devices for you. So if you light up the 2 volt battery, but not the 3, you're somewhere between 2 and 3. And if you light the 3, but not 4, you're somewhere between 3 and 4. So that's a starting point for the voltage. And to know if you're getting current, current is just how much electricity is flowing. Voltage is the, essentially how powerful is that electricity. It turns out they're different. But current will be uh, essentially related to how bright the bulb shines. So you've got two factors. Does the bulb turn on at all, and how brightly does it shine? So those are the two things you'll be optimizing um, at home or, or at school as you build these fruit batteries. And then we'll actually get a, a, a final reading, an actual accurate reading on the day of the So that's the challenge. I think that'll be a, a really fun one. Um, it's not as it's, it's actually pretty um, pretty challenging to get all these connected right and hook them up and, and a little bit messy if you have a real juicy piece of fruit. Um, but it's a lot of fun. So any other questions on that? Yeah. You're saying they can use three pieces of fruit in their... In the final, you, final you design. You can test as many as you want. Absolutely. Sky's the limit. Yep. You can test as many pieces of fruit as you want, but your final battery that you bring to test can have up to three pieces of fruit. Um, like I said, I, I thought about showing you how it works, but then, especially since I knew it was going to be videotaped, I didn't want someone to even part the videotape and like, figuring out how to hook it up, so I decided not to do that. But it really does work. Um, you really can create electricity just from two nails and a piece of fruit. Uh, and that actually is, is chemistry. It's straight up chemistry. What happens is that each of the nails is made of a different metal. So there's a hint right there. And in the fruit, when you connect it to the fruit, what happens is one of the nails gets oxidized, meaning that one of the, the metal of one of the nails loses an electron. And the other nail gets reduced, meaning it gains an electron. And how do you think that happens? It happens by traveling through the wire and through the light bulb, hopefully. It's working. The electron travels from one nail to the other. And why the fruit? Maybe you can tell me that. The fruit's actually pretty important. Okay. So this is actually reduction oxidation chemistry. Um, it's pretty cool chemistry. And I kid you not, if you do this right, you can make a little fruit battery that charges your iPhone. If you have an iPhone. Good question. Um, it depends on the fruit. It depends on the type of current that you're drawing. Um, but it can last for, you know, a day or so. Yeah, I built one two days ago, and it was still lighting my little light bulb this morning. So, um, yeah, they, they can make be pretty cool. Now, they're not really all types of batteries, right? I, mean, I, so, I wouldn't necessarily use them in a flashlight, but, uh, but it is pretty cool to think of how we can get electricity in different ways from, in this case, fruit. Any other questions about that? Okay, so let's move on now to the high school challenge. Um, high school challenge, as I said, is, is also really pure chemistry. This is my kind of chemistry. This is like goggles on, gloves on, mixing things together, making new molecules. Um, so, biodiesel is a form of fuel, and you'll notice that many gas stations actually, there's the option for diesel fuel, right? Um, now, disclaimer, I do not endorse putting what you make into an actual engine, okay? You can if you want, that's your call, alright? But, I do not endorse it, I do not suggest it, and if the engine dies because of it, it is not my fault, okay? Or the works. Or the works, yes. <laughs> That said, we are going to actually make the type of biodiesel that can go into an engine if done properly and purely enough. Okay. Now, how is this going to happen? Well, we have here provided for you all the materials to achieve this. 
as well as some directions to do so. So, simple vegetable oil. This stuff, this stuff is cheap. All right, how much did this bottle, this liter of vegetable oil cost? It was on sale, okay. so $1.79 on One sale. $2 for this liter, okay? Stirs around and mixes it. Take that so you don't have to hold it. 